Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Appreciate you being here as always. Today I'm reviewing another golf ball and today is another uh, ball from the lineup of the Top Flight family. So this is the Top Flight Hammer Control. Uh, this is a much cheaper ball, definitely a two-piece, maybe aimed a little bit more toward the beginner. Um, I know it's a very high selling ball. They're only available exclusively through Dix and Golf Galaxy because Top Flight you know, and them are owned. Uh, so that's kind of the only place you can get them at the moment without ordering them online, uh, which of course if you order them online will have to be through one of those two outlets. Uh, but the big thing here is, you know, I, I have reviewed a Top Flight ball already. I reviewed the uh, Bomb, which was kind of to me a little bit more of a gimmick. If you didn't see that one before, I'll include it in the link below or in the, in the description. Uh, but I felt it was a little gimmicky. A lot of people in the comments argued that it's for a really, really high swinger. Um, but regardless, it was still an interesting ball to test and I'm very excited to try a new uh, golf ball from their line. Up. Now, Top Flight, of course, if you don't know, in 2020, completely revamped their lineup after Dix and Golf Galaxy bought them. Essentially, they kind of redid the whole brand as far as marketing, you know, the way the package comes in, uh, you know, the design of the golf ball, where it's made. Pretty much everything went through a total re revamp and reboot. And uh, this is kind of where we're at. Right now, they have five golf balls. They have, you know, of course, the Bomb, which is supposed to be like the World Long Drive Competition Ball, which they now sponsor this year. And then also, um, they have the Hammer Control, which is like their soft two-piece. They have the XL Distance, which is like their firm two-piece. They have the Gamer, which is supposed to be their three-piece, kind of like... Uh, uh, entry level value tour ball um, at a very value price might I add and then um, so that is the lineup they offer so um, of course testing this golf ball before I even get started there's a couple things I'm going to be looking for one with this being a more of a beginner golf ball I expect it to have a very high ball flight and I expect it not to spin a lot um, a lot of the time that's what happens with you know uh, beginner golf balls when they're in this price range is some beginner golf balls will use spin as a way to get up in the air and get more distance and sometimes they'll just go higher they'll just be designed to be go higher and off the irons they come up real high wedges are really high drivers really high and that's their way of basically kind of giving forgiveness to a slower swinger um, with this one being the price point it is I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's gonna be the latter of the two um, this golf ball actually comes in at $17.99 a dozen but they always run a special it's two for 28 so that means that essentially you're getting them for $14 a dozen but wait there's more so these golf balls actually come in a pack of 15 not 12 so you get a bonus sleeve uh, so when you count calculate that, it probably comes out to about $10 a dozen, really, to be honest with you, which is about the lowest price point you can get. Uh, the only other one I've seen that low in particular is Cut makes a golf ball called the Golf Ball Red, which I have not reviewed, but it is on my list. Um, but it is $10 a dozen as well, and that's only if you can find free shipping. Otherwise, you're going to be over that. So this really is probably one of the most inexpensive golf balls you can get without being a pinnacle or a range ball or something like that. Um, definitely in the competitive market. So um, again, let's go ahead and just get into a couple things here. Let's get into the design of the golf ball. I like Top Flight's new logo. Now I mentioned this in the bomb review. I really think the Top Flight logo is very simplistic, uh, but it, it really says a lot without saying anything. So this is modern. This is to the new era. Um, very well designed there. Not a big fan of the lettering. I know they've always kind of kept that lettering. And then of course you've got, you know, the, the number on there, the four. I do like the blue. I like, I like the fact that the blue accents the hammer control, the red accents the XL distance. It really, you know, They've set these golf balls apart by adding little things here and there to the design. I like that. Um, it just kind of gives them a unique feel. Looking on the side there, you can clearly see the hammer control. Um, this is, you know, I, if, you, if you've seen my channel at all, you know I'm kind of a, 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 a alignment snob. Um, just a little bit. This one's not too bad. I like the fact that it is even. It's symmetrical. Um, I'm not a big fan of the arrows at the end. I wish they kind of just would have left those off, but... I do like the hammer control part. That's really cool. I think it lines the ball up good. I like the thickness of it. Um, I think it still gives you a, a true line. Um, and then, of course, if you look at the dimples on this golf ball, Top Flight does use a particular dimple pattern lately, which is like a dimple in a dimple pattern. Um, I'm not sure if it adds anything to the golf ball or, or you know, actually makes it any any significantly better um, but it's really interesting to look at it's definitely unique you don't see anything like this on the market for sure so it does give them at least a, a little bit of uniqueness to them um, but over than that there's really not too much to say about the golf ball uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of putting a little bit of chipping around the green and see how it is there all right let's hit some chips around the green and let's see kind of what we're working with here for checkup Okay, there we go. Finally got a little bit of checkup. All 
So one thing I've definitely noticed for sure is that this golf ball, if you put a little bit of height on it, if you open the face up and kind of flop it a little bit, it does have a little bit of checkup. Uh, however, on normal chip shots, honestly, there is nothing. There is nothing whatsoever. Um, the ball's almost getting no checkup. It's just rolling true. It's almost not even, it's not even acting like you're putting spin on it. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna hit some low chip shots. I usually don't get specific with my chipping around the green, but I'm gonna try to hit some low, high spinning ones just to see if I can get any checkup that way. Nothing, nada. The ball didn't even, the ball didn't even change directions. Wow, yeah, I mean that, that was a good hit and there's nothing there. Boy, that's hot. Okay, so overall impressions of the top flight hammer control is a lot of it is, is exactly what I expected it. Uh, for one, there's no checkup, uh, anything around the green. Like I said before, the only way I could get the ball to check up even a little bit was actually by getting a lot of flop and really getting some swing speed underneath it. And then there was just a little bit of checkup, but honestly, as far as that goes, it's gonna be a pretty true roll. Now, this isn't always a bad thing. A lot of guys actually prefer there not to be any checkup because some people just want that true roll of what the golf ball is gonna do. Um, I don't think a beginner is really gonna notice the difference. Most of the time with chipping, you know, you're doing a lot of bump and runs, you're doing a lot of, uh, you know, just trying to get it on the green, get it near the hole so you can two putt. So most of the time, if you're gonna be using a golf ball like this, you're not expecting it to check up a bunch or hit high flop shots or anything like that. It's probably out of your realm at that point. So it does make sense, but there is no checkup. If you're expecting there to even be just a tiny bit, I didn't have that, you know, maybe from 50 yards out or 100 yards out, it might be a little different based on, you know, some of the numbers that are coming up. Uh, but as far as around the greens, just chipping, not really much checkup there. The putter had exactly what I thought it would be also. The ball is very squishy. There's no feedback. If you're using a mallet putter for any reason or even a thick bladed putter, you're not going to really feel much response off of it at all. And the ball is going to spring off of it quite a bit. Uh, that's why I just had mentioned this golf ball being hot is because, <laughs> I mean, you barely come back and you hit the ball and it travels a long way. Now, this actually can be a good thing for beginners. Sure, you may lose the feedback aspect of it, but you don't have to bring the putter back as far. And when you're a beginner, that's really, really, really important. So overall, I think that is a good aspect of the ball. I think the ball does exactly what it should around the greens for a beginner. So uh, nothing really spectacular, but again, it does what it's supposed to do. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some of these numbers now that we're done around the, the chipping and the green. Um, let's start out with the 50 yard sand wedge, uh, 54 degree Mac Daddy. So I got six, or some, excuse me, 7,619 RPM. That's actually pretty decent. Uh, most of the time with a golf ball like this, that's a two piece that, you know, is really just designed to go in the air. Um, and it does definitely have a high loft with that sand wedge for sure. Uh, but honestly, 7,619 is pretty decent. I mean, even with a Pro V1 on the 50 yard pitch, I'm only getting about 75 to 78. 800. Most tour balls are in that range. So honestly, you wouldn't see much of a difference there. Of course, the only difference would be the cover, which this cover is an iometer opposed to a urethane. So it probably won't have as much grab and bite on the green. But again, we're talking about a, a $14 a dozen golf ball or $10 a dozen golf ball. Makes sense. Getting right into the pitching wedge, 90.2 uh, mile an hour ball speed. Anything over 90 for me is pretty good. It's in the range. I'd say that's just slightly above average. Um, honestly, really impressive. With it being very soft, the ball feels very squishy. Uh, there's not a lot of firmness to this. There's not a lot of feedback. Again, it's designed as a beginner ball or a slow swinger senior ball. Uh, so there's not gonna be a lot of feedback there. There's not gonna be a lot of click. It's very squishy. It almost boings off the club a little bit, which on your shorter irons definitely gives you an advantage. Uh, that's why I saw the 90.2. And then actually 8,463 RPM, that's pretty darn good. Even with tour balls most of the time, I only get about just over 8,000. So 8,400 is nothing to scoff at. It's actually pretty good. Um, so I'm very impressed with that number for being such a low value, you know, such a low costing ball. Um, it's very impressive in that number. Hopefully that translates into the seven iron. We'll see. Okay, so 109.2 might be a little low off the seven iron and I was afraid of that. Um, seven iron for me, you know, uh, being a, a bladed club, a little bit less loft, a lot firmer off the, the, the feel for sure as far as compression goes. So I did lose a little bit. I like mine to be around, 
109 is probably my average, but I like it to at least be 110. So it might be just a tad lower than average, but the spin was only 5,489. So um, usually my, my sweet zone is about 55 to 5,800. So it is a little lower than that. So it actually kind of offsets. Essentially what that means is, yeah, I lost a little bit of ball speed and I might've lost maybe two or three yards on my distance, but with the spin that wasn't there, I actually gained it back. So it all averages out. Um, the lower spin means that you might not stick a green as much, but we're only talking about 200 RPM, so you're not going to notice it that much. Honestly, it's the difference between maybe two or three feet rolling. Uh, but that's still pretty impressive, to be honest with you. So, uh, you know, I don't know how the driver's going to come out, but let's find out. All right, so let's go ahead and start at... Uh Looking at these numbers, let's see, where do I want to start? Okay, let's just start with the ball mile, mile per hour first. 139.2, average. You know, there's really nothing there. Uh, you know, that's that's average for me. Um, nothing spectacular about that. 2,781 as far as RPM goes. And um, again, uh, something I'm noticing across every platform the launch angle is very high compared to what I'm used to. And I expected that. I expected it to be higher. Um, but, you know, driver wise, just to give you an example, I usually try to go for about the 12 to 14 launch angle range for me. It's just usually what works best for me. I'm getting like 17, 18, 19. Even one of these was 23 with this club. Now, the 23 could have been a miss hit, granted, but overall, just the, the launch angle is very high. So, again, if you're someone who's a lot faster of a swinger, even a moderate swinger, you're probably going to end up suffering from that a little bit because the ball does have a little bit more backspin. It's designed to. It's trying to get the ball in the air. And also, I think with it being soft, it's just going to end up being slow, which uh, distance-wise, 220.7, that's very, very, very low as far as the carry. Um, and I noticed that throughout uh, the entire process of testing the driver uh, when the Mevo was picking it up. It, it was slow. It really was, guys, because what happens is essentially the ball's going so high in the air that it's just kind of deadening out there. I have about a 100 to 105 mile an hour swing. If I'm if I'm just swinging normal, if I really put a lot behind it, I can get to 110, uh, but that's if I give it everything I got. Um, and anywhere in that range, this golf ball really doesn't work that well off the driver. Um, I think if you're someone who maybe is a beginner and you're playing on a lot shorter of a course and you're not using your driver really, you know, there's a couple courses I play at where I only get the driver out once or twice, that might come into your favor when it comes to this ball. But if you're on a nice big long course, country club member, and you're hitting driver every hole, you're probably going to end up seeing that 10 yard difference because that's what I ended up getting was a 10 yard loss. Um, some of you might even see a little bit less than that. Some of you might not see any at all, but with the higher launch angle, uh, fast swing speeds need to kind of stay away. And then let's talk about, of course, the durability before we leave. Um, I don't expect the durability to be really be anything here because let's be honest, if you bought this golf ball, it's because you expect to lose a lot of them. Um, even looking through the reviews on Dick Sporting Goods and Golf Galaxy, the majority of people were like, hey, it's easier to lose this than it is a Chrome Soft, or it's easier to hit this in the pond than it is an expensive ball. Um, so that's why you're buying these, let's be honest. I mean, no, one, no one's buying a, a $10, a dozen golf ball and expecting them to just change their game. I, I get that. Um, but I am interested to see how the durability does because if you do happen to get through nine holes or so, you know, I, I would want to know how it would hold up. Um, it's average. Let's just go ahead and call it that. I'm going to go ahead and show the pictures here. As you can see, it is very, very scuffed up, um, very dirty all the way throughout, lots of scrapes, no deep cuts, which is really nice, um, but it's definitely scraped up. It's going to affect the ball flight a little bit, but again, this is after the gauntlet. So this is you know, 60 to 70 shots off the trackman, a few chips around the green, playing it with onto the course a little bit. So all in all, it ends up being about 90 to 100 shots. Um, so that's going to be a whole round. So it actually did make it through the whole round, which is pretty impressive considering its price point. Um, but after that, it's toast. I would not use this golf ball anymore after this because at this point, I mean, it's just a junk ball. You need to have it if you've got water or something. But I wouldn't trust this golf ball on the green. I don't think it would have a true roll anymore. Um, but it's still impressive because with this price point, you know, if it can get you through nine holes, I think the majority of guys aren't going to make it through nine holes without losing a golf ball who buy this. Um, but if you do and you happen to make it through nine, this ball getting there is really impressive. Uh, it's a very tough iometer cover, and I'm going to give it bonus points because I just didn't expect a lot going into it. Um, but the fact that it still is usable and isn't completely trash, I've seen worse. I've seen worse from more expensive balls. So um, it's very impressive there. I got to give it some bonus points. And of course, let's get into the final here. Who is this golf ball for? Well, it's kind of like I've said through the whole thing. It's exactly what I expected. There's, you know, sometimes what you see is what you get, and that's exactly what this golf ball is. It's a very soft version of a beginner's golf ball. Um, it's extremely well priced. It's extremely cheap. Uh, but there was a couple of things that really impressed me. One was the durability. I was very surprised that it could last through a whole round of 18. Um, I've 
played some pro balls that didn't even do that. So honestly, the fact that I got so much out of this one was really impressive. Um, looking at these numbers, you know, the driver was pretty abysmal when it came to the numbers, but I did really like what I got out of the pitching wedge. I liked what I got out of short irons. You know, I even kind of liked what I got around the green a little bit. It felt nice. And I think if you're a beginner putter, not having to come back as much and get a little bit more spring out of it was nice. So um, there are a lot of things that really impressed me. I think it spins really well with the short game, which again, I did not expect for such a cheap golf ball. Usually soft ones like this with a cheap cover don't spin that well. Um, but the fact that I was able to get a significant amount of checkup out of it was really impressive. So um, if you're looking at a golf ball as far as a beginner golf ball right now, I really don't have anything that compares to this. Um, as you can see, even my golf dot made it all the way through, which is awesome. Um, not even a scratch on that bad boy. So um, if you're looking for a very cheap beginner golf ball, you're looking for something just to use as practice, you're looking for something to hit over water, um, if you're just not expecting a lot, you really can't go wrong with this golf ball. It really performed a lot better than I thought it would, and given the price point, you really can't go wrong with it. Um, the only thing to really look out for is you're going to get a lot of height with your shots, so on a windy day... I would definitely stay away. You know, these are going to end up carrying a lot further than you want them to or coming back at you a lot further than you want it to. Um, so on a windy day, I definitely wouldn't too. And also, I think if you're a fast swinger, even if you're a beginner, you know, I'm going to end up testing the XL distance ones. And with those being a little bit firmer, maybe they won't go as high. Uh, but this soft one really goes high. So if you've got a fast swing speed at all, I would definitely not touch it with a 10-foot pole um, or, I guess more appropriately, like a 4- or 5-foot pole. But um, all terrible puns aside... Um, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, the channel is continuing to growing, and I appreciate all you guys for subscribing and being here and watching these videos. Um, there's more to come. Thanks, guys, so much. As always, keep watching and keep saving.